Hello, welcome back to Europa. Today I'm going to try and get a few more things done, like uh, upgrading that furnace, probably add a tank onto it, and um, try and make that outside production area an enclosed area so I can work on it even when there's storms. Air tank critical. And also get uh, wind power Temperature low. started as well. I like wind power on Europa. It's a constant little trickle of power. Low pressure. And there's a rookie Oxygen mistake. Critical. Just pressure went to critical. tried to go through the airlock without closing my helmet. That was stupid. Whoops. some more frames. Eventually I'll stop using iron to make frames and switch over to steel since it's more efficient. But for the time being, iron is fine. Nope, missed that one. I have to go fetch it. and lots and lots of insulated pipes. Might as well just build a bunch of them. And time to print out some lockers. Ooh, flying pipes. lockers, I like the um, the medium shelves better than the big lockers with the doors on them. I think with these ones you get the same uh, bang for your buck in terms of uh, how many slots you get per uh, locker kit used. You get 15. But it's just a bit wider at the base. But that's okay. some shoots to make the furnace a little less annoying. 
So now when it comes to basic furnaces, I usually only ever use the, um, the output pipe, because I find you can also put input back into the output pipe. I think the output pipe is just directly connected to the furnace core, so putting uh, gas or fuel back in there seems to work. But safety first, I'm going to set up a emergency release valve. Or it doesn't have to be an emergency, I just want to reduce the pressure. uninsulated pipes for the part where it's venting the gas into the atmosphere since I don't need insulation for that. I'll use uninsulated pipes where I can instead of insulated if you don't need the insulation. They're much cheaper. vent on top of a tower facing up because it's not a good idea to blow that hot gas like on something you care about or your face or anything like that because it's really high pressure hot gas. It's not fun stuff. And I have actually blown things up by uh, having a vent too close to them. A vent that released uh, furnace gas, that is. Add a few more frames for the wind power. Of course, I forgot the iron sheets. Gotta go grab those. turbines. Or did I mention I hate these crates? And I'll need some more heavy cables too. Get 
that art furnace out of the way. And put this stuff on the not quite so useful stuff sh uh, shelf. I'll keep the Atmos Analyzer handy though, in case I want to uh, analyze any atmospheres. Also put the uh, the label maker in with the rest of the tools since it's an important tool. Now I will squeeze in here next to these rotating blades and squeeze these cables in somehow. Rates. And there, I have the uh, wind power hooked up now. So that will get me a constant uh, trickle of power day and night. Which is good. And when the storm comes, lots of power. That's when you want to make sure you have them hooked up with heavy watt cables. Low. Might as well get some water and food before I go mining. Air tank critical. Temperature low. Also set those shelves up in here, same as last time, the medium shelves. I'll put the uh, portable appliances in here as well, keep them there as a emergency backup equipment. But for the most part they either just sit there or I sell them to the trader or something. 
The seeds, on the other hand, they are quite valuable. If you lose them, the only way you can get them back is with trading, so make sure they don't go missing. And good riddance to the rest of those crates. this time. Always a good thing. Day four. Back at the base, got a fairly, fairly good amount of stuff.
think I'm just gonna head back out again, get some more. Oh, whoops! I forgot to turn the tracker on. Good thing I noticed before I got too far away from the base. That would have been bad if I'd got totally lost. Back and this time I brought, uh, got some more iron and coal because I really need to make some more steel. What I like to do is, uh, instead of taking ingots out of one printer and putting them in another, just go and uh, get enough stuff so that you don't have to do that. It's usually the better option. And we're on day five now too. Time flies. Especially when you speed it, most of it up to full time speed. Temperature low. Mining. Right into some nickel figure. I might as well mine it while I see it. Because, uh, you know, in the future when I need nickel for uh, the alloys, and I go on a, a specific mining run for nickel, it never fails. I'll find everything but nickel.
and I'm back with lots of goodies. Might as well smelt it. Get that furnace hot. Some iron first, or steel rather. Three times iron and one times coal. smelt the rest of the stuff. I like to smelt from the uh, hottest requiring ingot uh, on down to cooler ones because as you smelt stuff the furnace will naturally cool it off. Put that battery back where it's supposed to go. stuff on the shelf so it doesn't blow away or get kicked around when I walk through there. Some silicon and some steel and insulated tank. Oh, need copper.
might as well just seal the furnace in now. Used to be that sealed in furnace would be completely insulated and would lose heat. But now they've made it so it loses some amount of heat. Which is okay. some volume pumps so I can pump gases in and out of that tank. There's those pipes. We'll need some more. First steps in first V2 is to get that tank up there. Then these volume pumps, one facing upwards, one facing downwards, so they can pump gas in or out of that tank. Depending on which one you use. And then hook the other side up to the output port on the furnace, which is just hooked in there. That gives me a way to move gas in and out of that tank and insulate it much better. need to wire those up. Just hook them in the power there. They're not going through an APC yet, but that's okay, I'll fix that later. Cover that cable, might as well. Thing for safety. Pipe meter. And I'll connect that up to the tank so I can keep an eye on how much pressure is in that tank. up like that as I'm eventually going to put a roof up there so it makes sense to make it face that way. Hydration critical. Also start setting up the uh, system to heat the inside of the greenhouse with the um, with that tank via heat exchanger and radiators and so forth. Just 
just grab as much stuff as I can, try and get it set up so that I can uh, do the work while I'm inside uh, getting more water so that I minimize the number of trips I need to make through the airlock. I can go inside and do the eating and drinking and then also set something up. That's an ideal situation. in the tank is okay and we're on day six yep, 7.4 megs of 568 degrees of toxic gas lovely stuff make sure it's a heat exchanger gas to gas not a gas to, to liquid one the gas to liquid one is the default and I've made the mistake of connecting gas pipes up to it and wondering why the heck it wasn't working. You can hook the gas pipe up to a, to a liquid port and it will let you do it, it just doesn't do anything. The pipe just comes to a dead end. So that's one side of that heat exchanger. And the other side will eventually be uh, hooked up to the atmosphere inside the greenhouse, but also through a valve, so it's not constant. Because that would heat the room up too much. This down here for cooling. I will place the um, radiator on a regular pipe instead of an insulated pipe, because for the most part, if you if you put a radiator on an insulated pipe, you you're kind of wait defeating the purpose of it and wasting the insulation. There's one exception to that if you're running pipe on a wall where there's two different atmospheres on either side. You, might need the insulation in that case. Temperature low. Air tank critical. Temperature low. Now I'll set up the system that I use to heat up and cool down this room. That top valve, when you turn it on, it activates the heat exchanger so it will heat the room up. And the valve on the right will uh, allow the atmosphere to come into contact with that radiator outside the room, which will be nice and cool. Now with either of these valves, you just want to turn them on for a second or a couple of seconds and then turn them back off and don't leave them unattended because they can heat this room up to 200 degrees, no problem. And get it up to around 20 degrees in here. Do. 
shut that annoying alarm up. Get rid of some of this unsightly Europa gag. I don't have enough to make steel. I know I have some steel in that um, the pipe bender printer, but I'm gonna go mine for the stuff instead. And I'm back. I actually got a fair amount of lead that time. That will be helpful when it comes time to make solder. Pump some gas into the furnace. Gotta heat it up a bit.
put some steel and iron into the auto lathe, build some uh, structural stuff like frames and sheets and whatnot. Next I'd like to start the process of turning the production area here into a proper room. Won't really be breathable, but it will be storm proof. So I can keep working it in a storm. And coming up on day seven, now we have to start uh, worrying about the storm because it will come soon. Once the pressure gets low enough on that furnace, there's no point in having that volume pump on anymore. Extend the base out a bit more. Get rid of some more Europa Gak. It's just everywhere. seem to get rid of it.
And I think we're coming up towards the end of this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, just going to eat and drink and do the usual, and that will be the end of it. Thank you very much. Hope to see you next time.